The MB-1 Air-2 Genie was the world's first nuclear-armed air-to-air weapon and remains the most powerful missile ever deployed aboard US Air Force interceptors. Developed as the Cold War began to heat up, it would be carried aboard a succession of aircraft including the F-89, the F-101B Voodoo and the F-106 Delta Dart. The MB-1, later the Air-2, was an air-to-air rocket with a 6 mile range and a 1.5 kiloton W-25 nuclear warhead. It was ostensibly a tactical nuclear weapon designed to take on Soviet strategic bomber formations. The early 1950s saw the Soviet Union's strategic bomber capability expand from the Tu-4 B-29 Superfortress copy to include the Tupolev Tu-16 and Tu-95, as well as the Mashishiv M4. These new, long-range, nuclear-capable bombers posed a serious threat to the continental United States. It was decided that only nuclear anti-aircraft weapons could counter the new high-flying Soviet bombers. We've previously looked at the Boeing Bomark, the world's first long-range surface-to-air missile, whose role was similar to the air-launched MB-1, engaging incoming Soviet bombers. During the early 50s, before the emergence of ICBMs, the US Air Force expected the main nuclear threat to the United States to come from massive attacks by long-range Soviet bombers carrying atomic bombs. The US Air Force hoped that weapons like the Bomark and the MB-1 would be able to engage and neutralise large Soviet formations before they reached their targets. This would be achieved by US Air Force interceptors scrambled to meet the incoming Soviet aircraft. The interceptors would move into engagement range and launch their MB-1 missiles, before turning away to avoid the blast. The Genie would detonate inside or near the Soviet formations, breaking up their attack. For this role, attacking massed enemy aircraft, the Genie certainly appears to have been an efficient weapon concept. In these illustrations we can see some of the escape manoeuvres taught to F-106 pilots for escaping the blast radius of the MB-1, illustrating the close range they had to be to launch. Development of the MB-1 began in 1954 at the Douglas Aircraft Company. Physically, the plump-looking air-to-air nuclear rocket was 9 feet 2 inches long, with a 17.5 inch diameter, weighing in at just over 820 pounds, or 372 kilograms. The weapon had four fins, which spanned over 3 feet. These deployed once launched, and helped to stabilise its flight. The Genie carried a 1.5 kiloton W25 nuclear warhead, and it was powered by a solid fuel rocket engine. It could reach speeds of up to Mach 3.3 and travel just over 6 miles before detonating. Its effective blast radius was estimated to be just short of 1,000 feet, or 300 metres. The Genie relied upon this area effect as guidance systems small enough to be fitted to the missile were in their infancy. As a result, the Genie was essentially an unguided rocket with no onboard guidance. Excuse this brief interruption guys, I just wanted to ask you to make sure you're subscribed to the channel and that you've hit the notification bell to make sure that you don't miss future videos. We need all the help we can get to overcome YouTube's algorithms, so please drop us a like and if you have any questions about the video, please leave us a comment and we'll happily answer them. This all helps new people discover our videos. Please share the videos with friends. Tab owes many of our viewers to those who share the videos on social media and with anyone who might be interested. A Northrop F-89J has the distinction of being the only aircraft to fire a live MB-1 during the Operation Plumbob tests on the 19th of July 1957. During test shot John, the F-89 was flown by Captain Eric Hutchinson with Captain Alfred Barbie acting as the radar intercept officer. They launched the Genie at around 18,500 feet. The nuclear-tipped weapon accelerated to Mach 3 and travelled 2.6 miles in less than 5 seconds. While operationally the weapon would have been detonated by a time delay fuse, the plumb bomb detonation was triggered by a signal from the ground. The time delay fuse would normally allow the aircraft that had fired the weapon to avoid its blast radius. Test Shot John was a form of controlled human testing with not only those on the ground beneath the blast tested for radiation, but also the crews of the aircraft involved in the launch of the rocket as well. 
This contemporary film about the tests notes that neutron and gamma doses for the three crews did not exceed five reps, or three rongan, respectively. A report published later noted, neutron and gamma radiation doses received by the crew members was less than had been predicted. To some extent, this may be attributed to the effect of aircraft shielding, which was not utilised in the theoretical predictions. The experiment proved that the MB-1 air-to-air rocket can successfully be launched by the F-89 aircraft at 19,000 feet, with a radiation dose to the delivery crew within acceptable limits. Here's a clip from the US Air Force's footage of the test, filmed for publicity, with original narration from the ground. H minus one minute. The airplane is up over our shoulders. It is a bright silver spot in the sky. I'm going to look away and then I'll find it again. 30 seconds. I got him. John sees it. 25 seconds. Look away and then look back and you'll see it easy. 20 seconds. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. There it goes. The rocket is gone. We felt a heat pulse, a very bright light, a fireball. It is red. The sky looks black about it. It is boiling above us there. It is rapidly losing its color. There is the ground wave. It is over, folks. It will happen. The mounds are vibrating. It is tremendous. Directly above our heads. It went. It went. It went. <laughs> well, I'd hate to be good, good. As there is a huge fireball. The mounds are still echoing through here. The yield of the explosion was estimated to have been around 1.7 kilotons. 18,500 feet below, at ground zero, five US Air Force officers and a photographer volunteered to stand under the blast to prove that the weapon was safe to use over populated areas. The radiation doses received by both the F-89 crew and the men on the ground were reportedly small. The MB-1 became the primary air-to-air weapon of the F-106 Delta Dart. This footage includes an illustration showing how the MB-1 was deployed from the F-106, as well as some of the live rocket tests during the development of the Delta Dart's launch system for the Jenny. Douglas built more than 1,000 Jenny rockets before terminating production in 1962. In June 1963, the MB-1 Genie rockets were redesignated as the Air-2. The US Air Force's operational deployment of the Genie ended in the late 80s, with the retirement of the last F-106 Delta Darts. The Genie's other operator, the Royal Canadian Air Force, continued to operate the Genie aboard Canada's CF-101 Voodoos until 1984. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video looking at the MB-1 Genie. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, please consider sharing it with friends, and you can also support us via Patreon, and coffee.com as well. Links to those are in the description box below. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you in the next one.